we evolve because it's what we can do. It's what we should do. Today, tomorrow, forever. I'd like to introduce you to a little girl I once knew. Her name is Julie Dawn, and she was named after her father, Julian. Julian was known as the Spaniard, where he was living at the time in Newmarket, England. Her mother, Irene, was English and originated from the area of Kent. But Irene and Julian were not able to raise their daughter due to complicated circumstances, and so upon her birth, she was secreted away in foster care. It's interesting that at the time of her placement into foster care, she was no longer considered a baby. No, she was now called a matter for the country of England to settle. She was a matter, a complication, a predicament. As innocent as this child was, she was judged before she could even speak. She was labeled as a difficult-to-place child before she even knew what identity was. Her social work worker wrote of her, Julie Dawn is a strange-looking child. She is very dark in coloring and in complexion and presumably takes after her father, the Spaniard. But Julie Dawn was fortunate. She landed into the home of a kind foster carer by the name of Mrs. Hipkins, who wrote letters to whomever might one day adopt this little girl. She wrote about her likes and her dislikes, how she liked to sit outside in her stroller, taking in a crisp English air, how she did not like bath time. These letters written on blue paper were eventually given to the American family who would adopt little Julie Dawn, and they offered those letters some sense of familiarity of a child that would now be entering their family for good. And once again, everything changed for Julie Dawn, even her name changed to Michelle. You see, I am Julie Dawn. I am a former foster child, an international adoptee. But I'm not here solely to share my story of adoption with you. No, I have 17.8 million other stories from around the world to share with you and another some 500,000 stories to share with you from right here in the United States. There are 17.8 million children around the world who are orphaned or being raised in orphanages. There are over 500,000 kids in U.S. foster care today. 25,000 kids age out of foster care every year in the United States without having been adopted, meaning they don't have a family. Of the 25,000 kids who age out of foster care every year, in the U.S. without a family, 25% of them become homeless, 30% will be pregnant before the age of 20, and 56% remain unemployed. In addition, 80% of prisoners in the United States have come through the foster system at some point in their lives. 80% of trafficking victims have been through the foster care system at some point in their lives. What do you think are the stories that these orphans and fosters have told themselves about their worth and their potential? What do you think are the stories that others have told them about their worth? What messages are we sending as a world community? You see, when I was in UK foster care, I was given that title of a difficult-to-place child, and it was an unfair label, but it was a label that I believed for a very long time. And I'm not alone. Every orphan, every foster child has been unfairly labeled. The truth is they possess limitless potential. Their circumstances do not define who they are. They're human beings just like you and me. They long for love and family and connection, a safe and secure place to call home. But all too often they are branded, they are marginalized due to what's happening outside of their control. And none of it, none of it defines who they are or the universe of promise that they hold. The result of all of this is that millions of children around the world are suffering as I speak to you. You see, society judges what it has yet to understand. 
there does exist in our society a double standard of grand proportion. We celebrate figures and characters from literature and religion who have been adopted, orphaned, fostered. Think of Moses. Think of Superman, Harry Potter, Tarzan, Cinderella. We celebrate these characters and these figures. But real adoptees, living and breathing orphans and foster kids, foster care kids are, they're made to feel ashamed of their stories. They're silenced from their truth. They're told that they are somehow broken, somehow lesser than the rest of us. And that's a heavy burden for a child to carry on his or her shoulders. And for every child who carries that burden, we must evolve. What has the world missed? Because children without families have been told that their stories do not matter. What have we missed within this global epidemic of building borders that separate us from hearing the cry of a child without a home? You see, it is my mission that the world is no longer willing to miss their cries, no longer willing to miss the treasures that these kids possess. And so I work to eradicate the myth and to shine a light of who these kids really are. And if I can do that with your help, together, we could change the very way adoption is perceived. And here is the super cool thing. Adoption has so much to teach us. In a political climate where we are all too often talking about building walls and borders to separate us, adoption stands as the living blueprint of how to tear those walls and those borders down. These are my kids. <laughs> Christian in blue was delivered into my life biologically. Ian in red was delivered into my life via adoption from Russia. And Eviana there in the center was delivered into my life via adoption from Ethiopia. We are a family of different skin tones, but we are one united family threaded together by love. You see, adoption teaches us that family has very little to do with biology, but everything to do with love. Adoption shows us the transformational power of loving beyond the borders of bloodline. Adoption has taught me as an adoptee and as an adoptive parent that there is miracle in the messiness of life. And it takes but one person to see the miracle in the mess and to say to a child, I believe in you. One person to see the miracle in that mess, to tear down the wall and say to a child, I dedicate my life to loving you. 17.8 million orphans around the world and 500,000 foster kids right here in the U.S. are asking us to take courage to stand up and to say, tear down the walls. Tear down the walls of government. Tear down the walls of judgment. Tear down the walls of the mind and of the heart. Dissolve the borders that keep children from finding their forever families. How did we ever create borders around a love that knows nothing of division? The very essence of adoption breathes inclusion. This is my family today. <laughs> and together we represent four different countries of origin, but there are no borders between us. We are a quilt of different patterns, fabrics, textures, tones, places of origin, but we are one united tribe. I believe that the foster children and the orphans of the world will one day find their forever families when we, as a society, evolve to the shared belief that no matter our ethnicity, no matter our religion, no matter our places of origin, we can be brother and sister, parent and child. You know, it was activist and entertainer Josephine Baker, who adopted 12 children in her day, by the way, <laughs> who said, surely the day will come when color means nothing more than the skin tone, when religion is seen uniquely as a way to speak one's soul, when birthplaces have the weight of a throw of the dice and all men are born free, when understanding breeds love and brotherhood. 
That, my friends, is borderless love. And it is the kind of love that can bring the lost children of this world home. Borderless love that can bring us home to each other. Borderless love that can bring us home to ourselves. Thank you.